What is up everybody? This is Marshall Couture of DonkeyJawProjects.com and today I am going to be doing a piece um, drawing speech from Arrested Development which is a group that I am very fond of Grew up watching, listening to. I'm gonna attempt to. <laughs> Trying to fill up my sketchbook here uh, for sketchbook summer. And so, we're going to do our best to try and make this happen somewhat quickly. And I'm going to see if I can see the. Uh, chat as I go on the computer so forgive me for taking a minute to kind of get this all set up hopefully you guys can hear me um, yeah so <laughs> just recording through my phone uh, let's see live streaming maybe that'll show me where the video is. I should have figured this part out first. Events maybe? Yes, here we go. Live now. Hopefully it won't do a weird feedback thing. It is muted. And I should be able to see the live chat too at the same time. Cool. Sweet. All right, and there's a bit of a delay. All right, and I need to get my reference up. All right, cool. So we're not gonna start with this, or maybe we will. No, maybe we'll start with this, okay. Let's get the gesture going. I wanna get the gesture going in a way that is not too obvious and that I can erase. Try to just get the shapes in. Um, so I was drawing him today a little bit. I got inspired. Um, I've been really inspired by music lately. And uh, so I've been just going through all kinds of different music that I love, um, that I kind of grew up on, and, you know, it's interesting, um, I've been, I've always said my favorite music is, like, hip-hop music and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, I remember when I was young, um, about let's see I don't know in middle school I guess or yeah I guess middle school um, that's when I started finding like different rap music or whatever and what was available to me was you know stuff like uh, Vanilla Ice <laughs> and uh, MC Hammer those are like probably the first groups I heard and at the same, similar, around the similar time, because I grew up in the suburbs and stuff, um, at similar time, I, uh, heard about Arrested Development, and really liked what I heard, you know, I heard, like, on the radio, Mr. Wendell, and Tennessee, and, um, People Every Day, those are, like, their big hits and everything. And, uh, you know, I don't know, I, that was definitely my favorite out of, you know, the few hip-hop things I found and knew about as a kid at that age. Um, my mom didn't let me watch, like, um, MTV and stuff, so there was a lot of music, music and music videos that I never quite actually heard um, 
so I had to rely on what was on the radio. Um, and so, yeah, that was one of the few things that I was able to kind of come across. And yeah, like I said, I really liked it. Um, I guess it's, I was into music at that time, but you know, I had, I didn't have a lot, you know, that I could go off of just by the, just the radio mostly, but, um, but also my, my dad, um, would show me different musicians and stuff that I wouldn't normally hear of. Um, he was a huge fan of like Steely Dan, but, uh, he also like was a huge fan of, um, Michael Jackson and Jackson 5. He grew up on that and, um, and other, he had some records and stuff, some old like, uh, like funk and jazz records and stuff like that and we used to listen to those and stuff and and so you know I did have some interesting kind of roots and my mom also had some cool music that she listened to um, Joni Mitchell I remember was one of her favorites um, I'm trying to think of what else uh, I remember a big one being um, and that's kind of this is kind of related to to uh, Arrested Development, um, well, in a weird sort of way, but, uh, there was, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Oh, uh, crap, I'm still, Paul Simon. <laughs> so, um, And, and he did that album, and that, I'm going to have to look into that again and listen to that because I remember that being a really cool album. Um, but he did that album where he kind of, he got a lot of influence from Africa. I think he visited, like, Africa and stuff, and he um, he did, you know, some of his music with, with uh, like, an African band or whatever, and he got kind of really influenced by them. So that's related to a certain degree and you know arrested development was you know i mean it literally is defined as an afrocentric you know band hip hop alternative hip hop band um so i'm thinking about this uh reference piece <laughs> that uh i chose and and now i'm realizing that uh I hope it wasn't a mistake because <laughs> I have to draw these hands in it <laughs> and hands are tough <laughs> I do I mean I draw like hands all the time because I'm always doing like figure studies and stuff but they're like more gesture drawing figure studies so I'm realizing you know I don't like spend all that much time on it it's just for practice and the hands are I usually don't even really get to the hands you know when it comes to like doing the finishing you know I don't really finish it's not a finished piece of art it's you know practice for getting gesture down and the form understanding the form hands is not the focus I do need to practice hands um, everybody I mean that's one of the hardest things to draw so every artist needs to draw tons of hands and I have but I need to practice more <laughs> That's for sure. So, how's everybody doing? Um, I've been doing all right. Just, uh, you know, working on projects. And, well, mostly I've been working on, um, and that's what I'll be working on later tonight when I'm done with this. Hopefully this won't take too long. I am going to get the watercolors out a little bit. But I have to just keep reminding myself that this is meant to be a sketch, not meant to be, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I do want it to be a little bit more of a finished piece than what I've been doing because, you know, doing rough sketches all the time, event sometimes you get to the point where you're like, well, I kind of, I want to do something a little more finished. <laughs> so this is kind of one of those <laughs> and if it comes out decent <laughs> I may 
also kind of create another video out of it, you know, like a speed up one, and, and I might actually even play the song that kind of inspired me to, to draw a speech today. One of my favorite songs off of their second album, Zingalama Dooney. Um, it's called Sunshine, and it's just, I don't know, it's really cool. Nice, super summery song, summer type song as well. Um, so, so yeah. And, uh, and that one I won't monetize or whatever, but, you know. Sometimes I do that. I don't care about the monetization. I just want to put out a video. And uh, sometimes I want to illustrate. I've kind of come to that recently. Like I want to illustrate from songs because, and this is kind of the topic of what I'll talk about, I guess, is like I've been super inspired by music lately. And, um, and so trying to see if like this stuff is like in proportion I didn't really get the gesture great maybe if I put the hair a little bit more down like this these shoulders should really be up higher this is the this is the part where I should fix it if I need if I'm gonna fix it I need to fix it here I don't know if I can just change the shoulders and not the hands, we'll see. Alright. So his kind of ear and chin kind of come here. Proportion is probably the biggest thing I struggle with. Um, just getting proportions right. And I didn't really focus on the gesture like I should have. I maybe should have drawn the underdrawing before I started this, you know, because it's kind of more of a thinking process than some of the rest of this stuff. And, uh, I mean, it, you should plan out and think, you know, a lot of everything that you do, but... But again, this is, you know, a sketchbook. I'm going to redraw the whole body. <laughs> Even the hands. Because <laughs> it's bothering me. I want to at least get the gesture right. So, um... So, yeah, I've been really super inspired by music. And, um, oh, and what I was saying was, uh, you know, I don't mind kind of not monetizing a video or whatever and, and just kind of doing something cool. And I've been inspired to make music or make videos so much inspired by music that I actually play the music behind it and almost even illustrate some of the concept in whatever song it is or whatever. Um, I've always wanted to do that even for my own music but I kind of haven't been making music as much lately which that's actually something I hopefully will be getting more to soon and I'm actually that's what I'll be doing tonight a little bit because I'm working on the anthology um, the one the one hundred life and space anthology um, music or uh, the video like the promo video, and so I'm creating like the music behind it as well, and like the audio track to it I guess. So um, I started working on it last night, and uh, you know. I kind of just got the intro done because there's parts of, um, it's kind of hard to like, like I don't make music as much lately so my programs I'm not as familiar as I'd like to be with them. So 
Um, I have to like relearn certain things, certain techniques and stuff, so it takes longer sometimes. But uh, I think I, I got to what I was trying to do um, last night and then Can you see me? <laughs> I'm way down here. Alright, so I definitely got the gesture better here. Alright. <sighs> Maybe I can get the hands better this time too. Because I wasn't really happy with what was going on. Some people say one one trick if you're... Uh, a couple tricks with hands. Um, People say that if you draw the hands first and then draw the arms after, it's easier to kind of connect it correctly. So draw the hands in the correct position. And then um, you can just connect the arms, sort of. Um, also, drawing like the shape of the hand first and then getting the fingers in later, which is actually a way that I should do, I think, and I'm going to do, actually. <sighs> Hey, what's up, Zencat? It'd be cool to hear your music. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, if you go to DonkeyJawProjects.com and click on the uh, top on the top area, there's a thing that says music. Uh, you'll be able to see some, hear some of my music. Um, I'm kind of going through a transition period right now where I'm gonna be doing something something totally kind of different with my music. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to getting into that, but, uh, you know, that doesn't mean I don't still like the music I've made so far. Um, you know, I make, uh, hip-hop music, but I think what I'm gonna do, um, with my music that's kind of gonna be a bit of a, a change is, uh, I, I'm gonna branch out into other genres, but it will be always be somewhat hip-hop based because that is what I love to do. Um, but not only that, but, um, I'm, I'm going to do a lot of some experimental stuff and I'm also going to maybe f like the album might not all have like music, like singing or lyrics or rapping on it. It might be, you know, partially instrumental albums, maybe fully out instrumental albums. Um, and then, you know maybe some songs will have vocals and I may not even do all the vocals myself I'm kind of thinking of it as like um, kind of like group like I don't know I, I think of like Santana or like um, uh, why can't I think of the name um, the gorillas where they have different artists at different times I mean with Santana it's a it's it's always Santana, but if you look at you know the people on his albums and the credits, like every song's got different people. He does a lot of collaborations, um, and you know every album's got different people and whatnot. And uh, and Gorillas, you know they kind of produce it, but then they have like different rappers on it, different singers on it. And again, a lot of collaboration stuff. Also, Tricky. I've been talking about Tricky, who I really like. Um, he kind of does the same thing. A lot of artists that I really like do that kind of thing. So I might kind of do that approach as opposed to just doing it all myself, I guess. Man, this hand is coming, jack coming out jacked up. <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> visiting people's websites um, yeah it's I forget a lot of times if I don't do it in the moment especially like if it's a, a um, YouTube video or something if I don't really do it in the moment then I'll forget sometimes kind of wish I didn't I really wish I didn't <laughs> do a hand gesture piece <laughs> I didn't mean to I didn't think about what it was, I just saw that it was a cool one. I could switch still, but I, I, I already started the video and I don't want this to go forever because I got other things to work on, so I'm going to have to just go with it and hopefully I don't jack up the hands too bad. 
So maybe the next few pages of my sketchbook, I'll start focusing on hands again, because <laughs> now I'm just embarrassing myself. <laughs> All right, so. I always feel like I can just draw anything, and I can, but some stuff is harder than others, and hands are, have proven to be very difficult for a lot of people. For mo every artist at some point, I think, has difficulty with hands, and it's something, it's one of those things you just gotta work really hard at and get some mastery over, because they're important. One of the most important parts, you know so much gesture in hands, so much storytelling in hands. And I could probably draw the hands better if I was like cartoonizing it, but I'm doing like this, trying to do kind of a representational, maybe I, maybe I could just draw my own hands, <laughs> like meaning like create my own ge gesture. Sometimes I'm good, I'm usually pretty decent at, you know, doing it from reference, but this one's proving difficult. I really want to get the base drawing, you know, decent before I, I move forward, because the next step is going to be watercolors. Um, Cause that's just what I want to do today. <laughs> Oddly enough, I'm sewing puppet hands as you draw. <laughs> that's cool. Everybody should check out Zincat, um, his YouTube channel. He's, he does like these, uh, these, like, um, puppet skits. And they're always like, kind of fun. Well, they're not always, I think they're always different, but, um, you know, they're, they're always, usually they're like, kind of funny things and I think he publishes almost every day or mo maybe not every day I don't know but you <laughs> publish a lot man <laughs> so definitely a cool channel to check out do, 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 do. Right. also like I took this screenshot from a music video and it's not like super great quality so um you know it's it's kind of uh blurry so I have to kind of come up with the details myself a little bit so it's a struggle like a lot of stuff is just very much washed out. So, yeah. All right. I really don't know why I scratched all that in. I shouldn't have. <laughs> do, 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 do. Another trick. Not with hands, but I don't have a kneaded eraser. I should have a kneaded eraser somewhere. I used to always have one and stuff around, but I guess I've been using different erasers lately. What a dick little thing. <laughs> uh, yep, no kneaded erasers in here. Oh, goodness. Sip of water. Oh, here we go. So one thing, when you're done creating your like underdrawing, ah, no problem, man. Um, you can, especially with a kneaded eraser once you're done and you're ready to like paint over it you can kind of do this kind of thing and lighten up the lines a little bit I mean you can also like straight up like erase it but you you can erase it to a point where there's like 
you don't see it too much but you see it enough to do your stuff also it's good to erase um, you know on lines that actually aren't gonna like the mistake lines <laughs> all right so this I think is just about all I need for um, just to get the right placement I really should kind of fix this hand a little bit more though Ah, goodness gracious. Anyways, alright, so I think we got kind of what we need here. Again, I don't want to spend forever doing this. So, alright, making sure we got good focus, good lighting, as good as it's going to get at least. And now I got to break out the brushes let's see I don't have very good brushes uh, I have cheap brushes but whatevs all right mm -mm 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 -mm. and I gotta remind myself to stick with wet on wet I mean, not no wet on wet um, watercolors because this is just a sketchbook. Um, and uh, it, you know, I need to keep it somewhat dry. Wet on wet will kind of ruin the paper. Let's see. There's different techniques with sketchbooks. Um, I mean with um, watercolor where um, you know you can get different effects and whatnot and wet on wet is kind of fun but I actually never have really done very great with it because uh, I don't usually have like really good art supplies like expensive art supplies so um, I guess I think the paper quality makes it easier to do wet on wet techniques. Um, sorry, I'm mixing paint. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I'm mixing paint right now. I'm trying to get a good skin tone. So, I think I got one. So I want to keep my brush dry, I mean not too wet, it needs to dry quickly too, so I can kind of sketch over it. Um, actually now that I'm thinking about it, I think I meant to do the sketch first because, um, I don't know, once the water has been, um, once the, the the paper has been wet, it's hard to draw over, you know, because it is just basic paper. It's not watercolor paper. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dry this part out real quick. Luckily, I got the fan by me because it's hot anyways. And I'm gonna go in and do the inks first, and hopefully that won't ruin that that one arm won't be ruined <laughs> uh, but again it, it doesn't matter that much alright so let's go with the big Pigma brush 
Um, I've been liking these brushes lately, and there's definitely some nice dark areas where I can kind of get right in there and do some darks. And, uh, yeah. Kind of blacken those darks real quick. So, again, um, yeah, I'm really inspired by, um, Arrested Development. And especially, you know, the main guy's speech. Um, I mean, they're all really cool, and I don't know, it's just like, you could tell their influences, like, they were very much influenced by, um, like, back then it was, you know, the hip-hop was a lot, there was a lot more positive hip-hop that was popular, um, and socially conscious hip-hop and, and hip-hop with a message was more um, like accepted <laughs> um, back then and so that's when they kind of came out during that time and, and one of their big influences is uh, is um, Public Enemy, that's like kind of the main, Chuck D, Public, Public Enemy, that's like one of their main influences, but they kind of, so they kind of took, took that similar approach, and that was a big influence for a lot of artists back then, um, Public Enemy really just kind of changed the landscape of hip-hop, or, or really got that, you know, Afrocentric, I guess, um, you know, political, conscious type of vibe. I mean, KRS was doing it too back then and earlier. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, and Public Enemy really kind of, I guess, popularized it. And that's when people started wearing, like, you know, the African colors and stuff like that. And this is, like, all kind of before my time. I was a little kid still. Um, and so I didn't really, it's a little bit before my time, but you know, I came to find out about it afterwards when it had already kind of started to lose steam, unfortunately. <coughs> Not that it ever went away totally, um, but yeah, I mean, eventually everything became saturated with like gangster rap and stuff like that. But anyways, these guys kind of carried the torch in a way. <coughs> where they kind of did a, a similar thing to like Public Enemy, socially conscious, but it was more, they were almost like, like a, a more, po I guess, positive version or something, like, um, their messages were more, less focused on what's wrong, and, but it still was focused on that, but it was like, almost like offering solutions. And also, it talked about like a spiritual journey, um, specifically that the the main guy's speech was going through, and you know, coming to an understanding and what he believes. And he talked about like God and stuff like that. And he was kind of there's actually a song on the first album called "Fishing Fishing for Religion," where he talks about some of the things he doesn't like, you know, and, and different spiritual disciplines. Um, and also, like, what his journey is and what he's trying to find. And, and the song Tennessee was also kind of about that. Um, so that, that was something you don't usually hear in popular music. And, and that album was very popular. <laughs> I think it went platinum or triple platinum or something. It was, it was huge. I always think of Arrested Development and the Fujis in the same vein. Yeah, 
I, I would uh, definitely agree. Fuji's are another uh, group that I definitely loved um, growing up. One of my favorites for sure. And um, yeah, and it's funny be that you say that because um, I was listening to uh, <clears throat> like I have um, like a, the subscription or whatever to YouTube Red and like the YouTube music app and stuff like that so um, I don't know I can kind of I've been binge watch listening to albums from some of my favorite artists that I never actually heard before um, you know so that's kind of what I did today with the rest of development and um, so I listened to a bunch of their albums and stuff and one thing I was noticing is that um, you could tell like in their later stuff after their first two albums they were heavily especially speech he was heavily influenced by like um, the Fugees and um, like Wyclef like Wyclef's solo stuff um, so yeah definitely in the same vein I think for sure and I think Fugees and Arrested Development share a lot of the same influences as well so it's all it's all circular, you know. Everybody kind of is influenced by each other and stuff, which is cool. It's cool to kind of analyze that and get an idea, you know, of, of where people kind of were coming from. So, and for me personally, um, as a Christian and stuff, like. I also really identify with um, speech because uh, he eventually did um, become a Christian and so it's funny because he talks about his journey in his earlier albums when he wasn't a Christian then he was just kind of um, figuring out things and, and also just trying to be socially conscious and stuff and, and kind of an activist really and uh, you know and then later on a little later on he, he kind of um, found found his way to Christianity and uh, it just it just reminds me of my journey and it's funny because uh, he talks because I was checking out some interviews too and he talks about you know as a kid he always had believed in God and had an interest but didn't know exactly you know what that meant he just it was something that was always a part of what he was into and and stuff but you know it, it didn't he didn't know exactly where where he was at with it but uh so it just reminds me of me because that's how I was too as a kid I, I you know I came to this stuff um, pretty early in life and, and as a kid I was always interested in it even before I understood where my beliefs were gonna eventually take me um, so I don't know I don't want to get too much on that tangent but um, yeah just something that I, I related with um, as I was checking out some of his interviews and stuff today. Um, so yeah, really interesting dude. Um, a guy who he believes in, in being active and not passive. And, and, um, and his music is very inspiring too and, and just a lot of good messages. Whether you believe in, in God or not, it's just a lot of good messages about just being a good person <laughs> which is something that and, and especially in the hip-hop realm because it's something that unfortunately the um, you know the labels and stuff don't they don't promote that kind of hip-hop they promote you know the gangster negative stuff and you know there's a place for for like the gangster stuff that's also a part of the reality and stuff of things um, in some people's lives but they went overboard with it where this you know you can only be successful as an, a hip-hop artist if you talk about that 
and that's not everybody's experience necessarily and you know there's so much more to life <laughs> and and uh you know and that is part of it and needs to be part of it you know nwa was kind of a group that brought some understanding to to situations and and um you know, city areas, and, and again, you know, Public Enemy, and a lot of groups, Gangstar, and, and a lot of other um, hip-hop groups have done a lot of good work there, and some stuff more on the funny side, some stuff more on the serious side, um, but that's not all that there is to hip-hop, and a lot of people feel like that is, I guess, you know, it's funny, growing up, I was, um, you know, I always talked about like God and stuff in my my music and um and people when I tell them that you know they'd be like that's not like they don't get it they're like isn't hip-hop like how could you be a Christian <laughs> and be a hip-hop artist you know because isn't hip-hop about you know all kinds of this negative stuff and they'll list whatever things they think hip-hop is about or whatever and you know it's just silly because it's always it was always frustrating because it's like there's so many artists who don't talk about that i mean think of like tribe called quest de la soul there's just diggable planets there's just so many amazing artists who didn't only talk about you know the struggle they talk about other things too and even just party groups and stuff like that so yeah it, it's just silly Black Amine, you. What's up? <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. So, anyways, that was kind of a big tangent, but I guess, I guess everything's a tangent here because I'm just, uh, you know, doing a little live stream and, you know, doing a little sketching. So, <laughs> sorry if I butchered your name. The name. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Off to do some laundry? I gotta do some too. You, Yeah, you have a good night too, man. And thanks for stopping by. Um, so, let's see. I don't wanna... I gotta make sure I remember to switch <laughs> pens. This is the thickest of this kind of brush. And uh, often, if I start with one brush, I'll end up wanting to just do the whole thing in that brush, in that same size, and then I'll end up having, you know, it's still kind of cool, but it's, it's not what I intended. I didn't get to do the detailed parts the way I probably should have. So I'm trying to just get the darkest kind of spots in, and I guess I could do that with the smaller brush now. There's no need. Is it is a good time for me to probably put this one away? So should I go with the medium for the rest of this? I suppose I could. Yeah, because then I'm gonna do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just gonna do some more dark details, and then I'm gonna go in with ballpoint actually, because I've been wanting to play around with some ballpoint stuff just for uh, detail or, or for like a little bit more than just sketching because I use it a lot for sketching um, and uh, let's see I have to be smart <laughs> of where I put these darks Um, and maybe I should just go right to ballpoint here with this. Because really this part that I'm doing doesn't really need that kind of edge to it. But I'm doing it anyway, so I'm just going to uh, kind of finish out this border type stuff with, with this pen. And then I'll go in with the ballpoint. since I already started. 
Um, is there anything else I want to do? No, I'm going to let that be and go in with the ballpoint. For details. I actually got it, your name right. Wow. <laughs> you agree, agree with my statement on rap? It's the art of storytelling, and now it's just about money, prostitutes, and guns. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 frustrating. There's actually is a lot more. You know, there still is a lot of popular. Um, I mean, not popular, um, but um, positive. Uh, hip hop out there um, still, but it all like what I would call good hip hop stuff that I really dig is more in the underground, um, and unfortunately, whereas back in the day, it was all one, you know, it was all you would have, you know, the gangster stuff, you'd have the positive stuff and the party stuff it, it was all one thing um, and you just you know you had the artists you like and you could kind of get a different taste from each artist or whatever and it was cool <laughs> um, but now you know you really have to dig for the good stuff and most people don't dig they just kind of go with whatever's popular and that's unfortunate it really is unfortunate um, because there's the stuff that's being fed to them is pretty much garbage, unfortunately. I mean, to be honest, I don't even listen to it, so I don't know what it is. Apparently, like, Kendrick Lamar, I think, and J. Cole or something have some more positive messages sometimes, but I, I don't listen to it, so I don't know. <laughs> I just listen to like underground stuff that I come across because that's what I like. I like the old boom bap so anything that's kind of in that area or I'll just listen to old music or a lot of times I'll listen to instrumentals because sometimes I can't get down with the words. Your name is from a Japanese anime called Spriggan. It's about religion in a way. Interesting. I um, I, d I have not heard of, of that, but um, cool. It's one thing I haven't really spent as much time as I would like is uh, watching like animes and reading mangas and stuff like that. Um, as a kid, I didn't have access to it. Um, but I thought some of the stuff was really cool. Um, you know, Akira, Akira, Fist of the North Star, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, and then as I got older, I just kind of didn't check out um, like animated things too much. Why, I don't know, it's weird, because I, I love 2D animation, I think it's awesome, I want to make it myself, but uh, for some reason I just kind of didn't watch it anymore, um, and you know, nowadays, sometimes I try to go on net Netflix and check out some animes and stuff, um, but I just don't have a lot of time to do that kind of thing as much as I'd like to anymore, unfortunately. Speaking about Japan, <laughs> one thing that I learned about um, oh man, I totally drove that nose way too high by accident. <laughs> uh, let's see, where's my hmm? How can I fix it? I could make the guy's mouth a little bigger. I guess. <laughs> it really should have gone down there. Um, 
a, fun, a funny thing about anime is, uh, where is my pro light? Do I have it handy? Oh, uh, you know what? I do have this. It's going to suck because I'm not going to be able to watercolor over it very well. Oh, there's other techniques you can do too. Trying to <clears throat> um, you know what I could do is watercolor it, maybe paint. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would work or not. Um, but what I was going to say is. that um, one thing speech was talking about like how you know they kind of broke up at some point um, you know the group and everything and uh, you know he kind of went solo for a couple of years and then they came back and started doing music again um, but what he found out was there even though like they weren't having you know a lot of success in the states anymore um, they, uh, they had a huge following in Japan and other countries, but especially Japan. And so he has had since, I think he's 19 when he's, when they started getting big with their group or whatever, he was like around 19. And since he was 19, he's pretty, until now he's maintained a music career. So that's kind of awesome. 80s baby, Slick Rick, Tribe Called Quest, yeah, that's awesome, and DMX. DMX I didn't get into as much, but uh, I can respect that. He's got some cool songs for sure. I remember, it was just like when he came out was like right when hip hop was starting to get like kind of commercial, unfortunately. Um, so I kind of, I lost touch with a, a lot of stuff at that point um, and kind of got into some other stuff for a while. You name my top three anime, Fist of the North Star, Akira, and Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, that's another one, but I, I didn't watch that one so much. I actually have an old tape of it. I think I did watch it. I, you know, I should watch it. Because <laughs> everybody says it's really good, Ghost in the Shell. Alright, so we're going to try to draw this nose again. And hopefully what I did to fix it will do the trick. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be just a sketchbook piece, and <laughs> nothing more, most likely, because... Because <laughs> that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> I, I wanted to, like, maybe make this into something more, but that's alright. I can draw, draw them again for what I want to do. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. We shall see. So, yeah. I never see, like, Fist of the North Star around, like, on, like, Netflix. It's, it, that's, like, it's weird because it was, I think it was super popular, but... It seems a little obscure, like I don't see it around when I look for it. Probably check it out. And also there's like different versions of it and stuff. And I don't know which version is the one I saw. And I just remember that version being really awesome. But maybe they're just all awesome and I should just do what I can. And, and you know, because sometimes I'll rent stuff um, on... Uh, on like Amazon or whatever and uh, check it out so that would be one of the things I'd, I'd do that with <laughs> yeah now his nose is like way too big too and it's like 
uh, it's hard to say. Well, maybe it's not. It, I guess it's in proportion with the face. Eh. This isn't coming out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Mm -mm. That's why I'm glad I'm doing it in my sketchbook. <laughs> I gotta speed this up anyways because I got other stuff I gotta take care of after I'm done with the video and with the arts I'll be working on some music it's on YouTube full movie English dub sweet I'll be checking that out for sure. I was saying earlier that some of these details unfortunately are very much washed out in the reference image I have. I'm definitely not getting his likeness very great. Sometimes I do better than others. <laughs> some days I do better. So yeah, really love speech and stuff and I'm um, looking forward to continuing to check out the new stuff that he comes out with. The last album they did was 2016. They actually put out two albums that year. And uh, so it's probably, I'm assuming, going to be a while before they release something new. But I'm still kind of catching up with that stuff so I'm good with that for now but yeah I don't know it's kind of it's cool nowadays that's the cool thing I do like about all this internet stuff is you can get more in depth with all these artists and things and I've been really digging that hard to draw the eyes through the glasses because really what I see is reflection <laughs> I don't really see the eyes so but I can see them just enough to kind of get them so I also don't want to put too many lines and make him look older than he is Trying to get the shadows in there at least so it looks okay. That actually doesn't look half bad. The nose is still a little too big, but could have been worse. <laughs> Do 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 do. 
Later, man. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, your drawings never come out as planned. Yeah, it happens. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> That's for sure. Alright. So. I do want to. Let's see. Try to get some of these details in here. Again, I don't want to go crazy. Part of it too is playing around with different techniques and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I wanted to see like how it would be to kind of go in with details. Um, with the Bic pen, like kind of a little bit of a mixed media kind of situation, so, yeah. I got to remember not to go crazy with the shading, um, because that's, the watercolor can take care of that, you know. It's actually not coming back out too bad. It could, like I said, it could be, could have been worse. This part, there's like literally no detail. Like, I'm literally just making these lines up here. <laughs> um, but I've drawn close enough to hopefully get them somewhat right, the folds and stuff like that. Do 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 do. All right. Let's see. So. I think my channel is going to end up becoming like me drawing musicians I love because <laughs> that's like literally like all I've been drawing <laughs> when I'm not drawing like figure studies and stuff and I've just been so inspired again by the mu by music so hey it is what it is <laughs> but uh as soon as I'm done with the anthology, though, we'll get back to doing some comics and stuff. Now I gotta do the hands before I do the back of that scarf. This is the scary part. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can kind of fake it. Fake it enough to <laughs> make it look okay. Because I really need to practice hands more than I have been. Like I said earlier, I think that's going to be something I'm going to be working on as early as tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe even tonight, if I have any extra time later before I go to bed. Probably not likely. Again, it's, it's kind of tough because uh, the details are, are very hard to see here. So I have to kind of make some of this up a little bit. Should have drawn these fingers much bigger because <laughs> they're starting to come out kind of crazy already. Oh, that's not half bad. That could have been worse. 
I think I got the shape down enough to <laughs> so it doesn't look horrible. If you draw a lot of lines, then nobody will know. <laughs> uh, experienced artists would be like, yep, he flubbed it. <laughs> but your average person, <laughs> well, they'll know because if they watch this video, <laughs> they'll see that I'm a fraud. I don't really know how to draw. <laughs> Old imposter syndrome. really don't need to do all that shadow because that's going to be done with watercolors, but I did it anyways. Just can't control myself. I mean, I do want to do some shadow, but yeah, that hand's not so bad as I thought. keep hearing sounds and it's freaking me out but I know it's just my cats <laughs> in the litter box doo 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 also another thing that's interesting with illustrations when you're doing it from reference is I don't know, like sometimes maybe I forget to commit, or, or I don't, I realize maybe I didn't want to commit um, to the light source that's in the reference, but, uh, you know, I kind of have to because I, as I'm looking at the reference, I'm drawing those lines and, and I forget <laughs> sometimes. That's not really the case here. I, I'm just kind of going with the reference this time, but that could be the case. All right, second hand, first hand down, <laughs> second hand. Let's make, let's see if we can not mess this up too bad. <laughs> that was easy, that little thumb thing. <laughs> now this hand's coming a little bit in front. So it technically should be bigger. I don't know if I really succeeded in drawing it bigger like I should have. It's a little foreshortening here, which is tricky. And uh, yeah, this finger is different in the picture, but I was having a hard time doing it the way the picture had it, so I kind of changed it a bit. It's not too bad. It could have been. Again, I could have messed this up a lot worse, so I think we're okay there. Hopefully that nose, that nose is really the most troubling part. <laughs> the nostrils are a little bigger, but uh, now they're looking crazy. He also has some shadow. That might help. I just kind of do the shadow, it's like, oh, it's just shadow. <laughs> it's not the nose. He didn't really mess up on the nose. <laughs> Alright. Start doodling and noodling. And he screwed up even more. <laughs> do -do -do, do -do -do. Definitely putting way more lines than I need to here, but I did that on the other hand, so it kind of has to match. It's surprising sometimes where the shadow isn't, like right here. This is peeking out just enough for the light source to come down and hit right under there. And if I was like making this up out of my head, I wouldn't, I might not quite catch that detail. That 
wrist is looking weird. But it kind of looks weird in the picture too, so I don't know. I've also been um, listening to a lot of Aesop Rock and checking out interviews of him. And something that's cool about him, and a lot of you may not even have ever heard of Aesop Rock, but um, one thing that's interesting about him, he's always been very underground, is uh, he considers himself a failed visual artist. <laughs> Um, he's been pretty successful, you know, as a rapper, but, uh, he went to school for visual art, and he loves visual art, and, uh, but he, you know, focused on his music, so, you know, he actually, even though he recognizes and is thankful for the success he's had, with his music, he also wants to be proficient in art, and I think uh, that he needs to just keep working on it, and I mean, he's probably, who knows, I haven't seen his art yet, so he may be better than me, and he's, he comes across to me as the type of person who's probably, you know, more hard on himself than he has to be, which kind of can describe all artists to some extent, or meant mo most artists, I should say, not all, but, uh, a lot of artists tend to feel either be somewhat of a perfectionist or they don't have a very great opinion of their own art and uh, it just is it comes with the territory for whatever reason so all right I think we're, I think we're about there yo Yo, yo. If I can start putting watercolors down and then finish this blasted piece. <laughs> Alright. So I already kind of mixed the skin color. Hopefully I put enough pigment in here to do all the skin color. What I should be doing is leaving parts that are white, but I already kind of messed that up a little bit kind of comes with the territory of like live streaming as well when you're trying to do art is you know you're trying to talk at the same time and, and uh, so um, you don't have sometimes you're not quite as aware and maybe not quite you know you might not think you know, thinking goes into this, you know, so you might mess that up, <laughs> mess certain things up because you're not just thinking of the art you're doing, you're thinking of what you have to say and stuff like that. And again, this is, you know, a sketchbook piece, so it's not like it has to be amazing or anything. But, uh, yeah. The woes of being an artist in the internet age. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I've always got to publish everything and share everything. I actually really like that aspect of it, it's fun, but sometimes I get too caught up in it, you know, and it's easy to kind of lose focus, I guess.
this part's kind of hard to like know how to do it because it's like the glasses so I gotta maybe show a little bit of reflectiveness. make sure I don't paint over the frames. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. But there's actually not a lot of highlighting on his face so it's a little bit almost doesn't matter too much but skin tone it's maybe a little more brown or a little more yellow than I'd like it to be but hopefully I can kind of go in there and darken parts off and stuff kind of the point this is like the mid tone alright this actually doesn't need all that much paint. I should put the same color on the hair as well. Um, it's going to definitely go a little darker on the browns there, but you know, kind of started off a little bit. Pretty much ran out of this pigment, anyways, but. a little more brown in there and get it darker. Some of those shadows. Sorry, I'm not so talkative anymore. Sometimes you kind of get into that funny zone. You forget you're supposed to talk. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of decided to live stream. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have. Because I got other stuff going on. It always takes longer than I expect to set things up and, and whatnot. I have opportunities sometimes and I'm like, oh, I should live stream and then things happen and it doesn't work out or again, it just takes longer than I expect. already still wet so let me do a little more in here I could do like a lot more detail but I'm not going to this is going to be a little messy Kind 
to cover up that mistake from earlier. <laughs> it's just going to look like a really messed up nose. <laughs> As I've said multiple times, uh, it's just a sketchbook piece. <laughs> That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. I never mix enough color, <laughs> so right now I'm kind of using the last bits. <laughs> Seems like. Do 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 do. All right. Sorry if this is a little boring. I will try to have better topic situations going on next time, but you know, it is what it is. I just have to do the cloth, I guess, now. I think that's about there for that part. Let me just do the hair a little more. Get in there with some darker browns. Maybe even darker. <laughs> there we go. It always dries lighter too, so it's like... that all right that should do for the hair what's up Mike I'm live yeah for not too much longer hopefully I just gotta finish up the shirt here and then I'm gonna finish this up and be done Do, 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 do. What is that sound? Oh, there's a bug. Eh, there's a bug in my light. I'm like, what the heasels? I want to lighten that. I'm mixing paint here. I don't know if you guys can see the paint or not. Maybe I should use a little yellow. Probably use a smaller brush too. Well, let's see, let me just go in a little bit here. Get some of these big areas. I guess I don't need to do too much detail here, so it's really the face that's important when it comes to detail. Not that this is like an amazing illustration that <laughs> that's even that much of a consideration, but <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I want to be finished here so I can move on to other things I need to do.
white shirts often have blue shadows <laughs> in my experience of painting. Why is that? I don't know. I should know. There's I know I know there's a reason. Probably has to do with the environment, colors and the reflections and the light source and all that fun stuff. I'm kind of making some of this up here because um, I just, for whatever reason, stopped looking at my reference like I should have done. And now, uh oh, oops. Now I'm going in again with the brown here a little bit. I realize this part should be darker. Uh, this neck area, you know, it's in shadow. I don't want to go too crazy. Where's my paper towel at? Lighten it up a little bit. I didn't want to go quite that dark, but it'll dry good. So that, that does the trick, I think, with that. Um, I think I might call this done. Let's see. Maybe I could do a little something with the glasses. that brown again. Uh, maybe I should use a different color. Give them a little bit magenta. Magenta. Maybe mixed with a little bit of that brown too. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. I got a hair in my brush. He's just got like a top rim on these glasses. And then I should probably be going in with a smaller brush, but this is a sketchbook piece. I'm not trying to go crazy. A little bit of shadow situation going on there. Some little edges. That'll do, that'll do. It's a little bit too pronounced there. Maybe I'll throw a little more brown in there because it's not looking. The red is a little bit maybe pink to me, more than it should be. Eh, it doesn't really matter. I think it gives the effect enough. I think that's about it. Maybe I should throw a little sig signature on there. I've been playing around with doing a different signature. March 2017. Why not? Look at the bugs. <laughs> Alright. Bam. There we go. Speech. His name is Speech. And he talks. He, he speaks. Alright guys. Uh, really appreciate you guys checking in, hanging out. If you're watching the replay, thank you. Uh, you know what? I'll... Uh, let me kind of zoom in here and see you can see the not so great detail. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Um, if you haven't already, please um, subscribe and like and comment and let me know what you thought of the stream and the piece and all that. And um, I'll talk to you later. All right. Peace out, guys.